Hi. So yeah. Uh, so today we have actually assembled uh, an excellent panel of community leaders from various regions to share how they provide emotional support and manage sensitivities and meetups during difficult times. So we have Hamish Watson. So Hamish um, is actually a Microsoft Data Platform MVP with a passion for efficient database and application deployment using DevOps methodologies. On top of his wealth of IT experience, Hamish has been involved in growing not only his local community, but the global community for over seven years. Hamish is driven to educate and help others learn. He's a director on the past community board, international speaker, and a repeat guest lecturer at a local university. We also have Shamira Prajapriya. So Shamira is an entrepreneur of four different business startups and currently holds several accolades, including being an MVP in Asia and national and international awards. His passion is in IoT to provide better solutions for customers' requirements towards digitalizing business processes. So Shamira has a great passion and knowledge sharing with the Sri Lankan technical community, particularly in making sure the second generation is future ready. So he's a partner with STEM Up Educational Foundation. So finally, we have Steve. So Steve is a Microsoft MVP for Office Apps and Services and the co-founder of uh, and managing director of Stratos Technology Partners based in Christchurch, New Zealand. So he works as a consultant on, um, on a wide range of technology pro projects for organizations large and small. So he loves to help people engage with technology and is actively involved in the local tech community. So welcome all, and thank you for being here. So we have a short 25 minutes, and I want to quickly dive in here. So, um, so you know, with the rapid growth spread of COVID-19, it has changed and disrupted our lives in many ways. I mean, obviously, there's a deadly human um, toll, there's significant economic damage and a whole new digital world that we are facing now. So the truth is that being in different regions, we are all facing, we're all in different phases of like dealing with the outbreak and obviously the impact on us varies, right? So in a time of crisis like this, community matters even more. So Steve, I'll, I'll get to you first. So as a community leader and a leader in your organization, what do you think are some of the key crucial qualities that a leader should have to guide their communities through the crisis? Hi, Suzanne. Well, thank you for the opportunity to talk. Um, I think uh, the first, First thing, I've been thinking quite hard about this question, um, and I think the first thing is actually recognising there's actually a crisis. So it's quite easy to go along and not realise there's a crisis. Um, following on from that, working out what it is you can do to help. Um, and that's really about empathising with the people that are affected, um, finding opportunities for the community to work in ways that they can help those people, and really just getting started. Um, I think a lot of people also have ideas, but they don't actually start. So it's still getting started. Right. Okay. So um, for Hamish yourself, what do you think? What is the key crucial quality? I guess, um, you know, we're, we're in an industry that is awesome, right? We've, we've got technology that can basically empower us to support our communities. You know what? We've got to keep in mind the human element and, and kind of, remember to have empathy and understanding of what our community is going through, um, but also uh, as well as the diversity of our community. And so the way I've kind of approached this, you know, I've, I run a whole range of meeting meetups and, and groups across the world. You've got to start small and you've got to get help. You've got to actually find people that are, are like-minded, right? And like Steve on this call, I just remembered three years ago, he and I ran a community event here in Christchurch. And now, you know, we, we started small. I found like-minded people, Steve and I work together. And we, we grew it out. And during times of crisis, you need help. You've got to reach out to people. And sometimes it's really hard to do that. But you've got to remember it isn't just about you. You know, and if you find the right kind of people, you find the right kind of technology, but more importantly, understand what you're doing and have that level of empathy. You know, crises are horrible to go through, but you can turn a positive out of that negative. You know, um, it can make you a more inclusive person. It can make you um, grow as a person. But more importantly, we can use technology and the great thing that we are, humans, to actually bring communities together and to go forward and, and make the world a better place. And, you know, that what we're going through at the moment with COVID is, is a great example of how 
you know, we're now using video chat. We're, we're doing it right now, but we, it, it's a new way of, of dealing with things. And so, again, you know, we've got to just appreciate the diversity of what of people that we're dealing with and understand that they will be going through different things. And so, you know, when you're doing video chats and everything, when you're running virtual groups, just understand that people may not be completely on board, but just listen. And again, be nice. You know, yeah. reach out to your, to your community. And yeah. again, as, as MVPs, we have a wonderful platform to engage with people and, and get through this. Yes, I, I can't agree more that compassion and empathy is actually key in times like this to support, um, to show support. So I'll turn to Shamira now. Um, I understand that you have done some events during like, you know, crisis. So can you share with us like what are some ways community groups can provide emotional support in times like this? Yeah, uh, so first of all, thank you for the organizers uh, Let me join you this one. For, and to answer your question, Susan, like, uh, I believe as the community and the professionals, like community leaders, we are the one who can support uh, for the other communities, like the people, uh, this kind of situation. So as Sri Lanka, so we were facing uh, two situations uh, during the same time last year, uh, same duration of the trail, we have to face a terrorist attack, uh, this attack. And this year, again, the same duration, we are facing for the COVID uh, situation. So I know hopefully all the professionals know that uh, Global Asia Group can be We are running on all other players. Uh, so uh, both years, we were facing struggling to run that event because uh, that is a one of the largest events in Sri Lanka. Mm. All we get together. So I believe, like, uh, this is, I would like to share some uh, insight about the last year organizing stuff. So last year, as an example, when we have that kind of a situation, so there was a lot of uncertainty among all the professionals, all the people in Sri Lanka. So we were also in a situation like how we can gather our community to one place and do this kind of a thing. So honestly, we were successful. Actually, we did a great event uh, with the support of three forces in Sri Lanka and the other facilitators, other basically local MVPs and other professionals, all these people. So I want to give you some proof that with this kind of a situation, so our community, our professionals, our listeners are happy about how we get support. So if you can see my screen, I have a one comment uh, on which I have highlighted. Uh, I don't, I, especially I hide the, uh, hide the, uh, the person who put this on LinkedIn, yeah. but if you can see the highlighted part, so because with the terrorist attacks, all were pointing finger at one uh, race, but I say it is a terrorist attack. But uh, this is the one uh, has a doubt about okay, how we can I participate, how we can uh, get interest with strangers. But successfully, end of the day, she has put this comment saying, I was able to spend a whole day with 250 plus strangers and it was a river to my passion. So that is the real commit we got out of there because uh, more than 8 hours, a lot of sessions, a lot of strangers, they get together, they ate together, drank together. So it was all together and they get introduced to everyone. So a word I want to highlight is we want to make our community to think about other person is one of us. If you have that kind of a mindset, so we won't face this kind of situation. Everyone is trained to support each other. So that is something I want to highlight uh, on the question. Yeah, and very often than what we neglect things um, that make a whole world of difference to an individual. I think we can be quite insensitive and stuff like that. So we need to make a conscious effort. So Hamish, back to you again. You mentioned about DNI, you know, diversity and inclusion. So what are some sensitivities that we should take note of when organizing global meetups? Yeah, basically, I mean, we, we need to um, take on board the diverse range of people that are going to be at our meetups, you know, um, both in terms of, of gender, race, culture. Um, and, you know, uh, I live in New Zealand. Um, you know, we eat beer and pizza, or we eat pizza and drink beer um and and so one of the things 
uh, I did as, as part of my, my group was to actually, you know, have non-alcoholic drinks and have vegetarian pizzas because I, I looked out into my audience and noticed that half the people weren't eating or drinking because, you know, it, it was just a historical thing. And so, again, just having that thought of including people and, and thinking, how, how do they feel? Because quite often, um, I was lucky enough as part of what I'd done with the Muslim community here in New Zealand, um, I went to some of their ceremonies and at times I felt like an outsider. And it was actually a really, really positive thing in my life because it made me realize now I know how it feels for others who, who feel like they don't belong. And it literally, I didn't feel like I was excluded, but I just didn't understand what was going on. And so that's another part of being inclusive is explaining some of the things that are going on in the meetups, right? Especially for people who are new, who English is a second language, you know, just doing that small few things. And I'm so glad that I, I went along to another culture's ceremonies because it, it made me grow as a person. So again, you know, going back to the virtual thing, my uh, my local meetup and uh, data management is now virtual. So again, it's around the timing of it because, you know, we're all working from home at the moment. So it would be natural to say, well, let's start it immediately at five o'clock. Whereas in fact, you need to think about, well, people need to decompress from their, their day at working online. You know, they will have done virtual chat all day. So maybe starting at 6 p.m., you know, just having that time for people to um, just reconnect with their family because often they might have been uh, stuck in a room in their house because they've got to shut their family out or, or whatever, right? And so again, I think there's a saying, you know, walk a mile in someone else's shoes. And I think at this time, we have a great opportunity to connect and to walk that mile in all of our shoes. And again, I say to people, reach out talk to people, understand, and just ask questions because it, it might and will feel uncomfortable for you. But that's actually a good thing because now you kind of know how other people feel and it allows you to meet them halfway. And it's such a rewarding experience just seeing people engage and feeling included. Yeah, I think for me personally, I feel that the sensitivities um, as we move to digital world is kind of different. You know, it's no longer about just the pizza or whatever not. It's really more than that. So I'll turn to Steve now. Like, so how do we actually ensure that we don't leave any anyone behind in a digital world? What do you think? Well, I think um, one of the challenges, especially when you've got a large meetup, you've got a large group of people meeting online, is making sure that there's not people in that uh, in that virtual room that are present but feeling left out. And so. Um, it's very easy as an extrovert like I am to start and, and, and rabbit on for a long time about a topic. Um, but what I've found is I've got to consciously stop and I've got to ask around the room and don't keep asking your favorite person in the room or even the person you asked last time. Look for the person in the room that you wouldn't normally ask a question and ask. Um, get their feedback. But it's not about embarrassing people either because some people are a little afraid to engage. So don't throw a difficult question at them. Yep. Give them a nice starter to get them started. Um, and I think the other thing that's probably really important here is when you're starting that discussion, right at the very beginning, is making it very clear what the purpose of this community is and what it's about. And, and by that, I mean the community is about talking about technology, but mm. really it's about the people in that community. So making sure that we're behaving in a way that's inclusive to others in the group. We're not, we're not misbehaving. Um, you know, we see code of conducts and so on coming up frequently now at every online event, um, and that's great. Um, but the very fact that we need one indicates there's a problem. So we need to be mindful of that, right? We need to make sure that that, that stuff doesn't get out of control. And I think the last thing that is that's really important also is if you're organizing these online events is, uh, and you've got a diverse audience, make sure your leadership team is diverse. So bring people in to help organize and speak or participate in the group, not one person, but make it a committee or a group of people 
so that you bring different views on you don't you won't have them all yourself yeah i think for us we are also mindful that the events that we do the meetups we do we make sure we cater to a wide audience and with us all now working at home attending meetups at home it's it's kind of difficult because sometimes we get a lot of distractions like what Tingyi shared earlier right like you know be it to provide attention to our aging parents who are at home with us or do with our kids who are you know doing their home-based learning how do we struggle like for myself i have like i'm at home with my so many pets like four cats so yeah how do we actually you know make that possible for for the community to join us so for us for instance we actually have the kids pack today yeah um just to make sure that you know guardians parents you know can actually join us and you know making sure that you know we're all so caught up work-life balance is, is i'm not sure if it's a thing anymore you know like yeah so we make sure that to throw in the exercises like how priyanka let let the the um, desk desk yoga yeah so we thought it was good yeah so um i'm just going to check whether we have questions at this point okay it seems like we're we are good um yeah so we are happy for anyone to actually jump in to share their community experience i think it's good to hear um yeah we, we still have some some time so um back to shamira maybe i'll just ask you like what do you think like it's important to you like the most important in this is in this period of time like doing like virtual meetups like for communities what is one key thing yeah uh this is something i want to highlight like uh, hamish and steve actually very clearly uh explained earlier about this but i think as it professional we are the one who are most benefited people during this situation and the people who can serve better to the community so i will give two examples as why we are saying most benefited like think about our life when you're working with the at office for the developers kind of they doesn't have a time like they will starting working in the morning and if there's a release they have to work in night but if there were people who was working remotely right now we have the time still working remotely but we are more engaging with our families and our, all the people, yes, as you feel it, we have to balance something about our other responsibilities. But still, uh, talk about the times we spend for uh, traveling and everything, all get saved. And so that's why we say. And why I say we are the people who can uh, serve to the community. Because as IT professionals, we can do a lot of, uh, by investing our other time, we can do a lot of community events. Right now, we do in Sri and also we are doing a one kind of a situation because all the education system, the offline system is down. So right now, the, there are a lot of uh, planned examination in Sri Lanka. What we have done is, we collected all the lecturers in Sri Lanka and we have set up an online platform under STEM of Education, which is what we do in Solatiri. So we provide one platform where our, all these students can learn their subjects. Those, those uh, lecturers will be online and everyone can join. So that's why I say, our technology knowledge and the, the platform what we have, the fact is we are investing all those to serve the community better. So, and the one other thing is like what we do right now. Now, the, with more than what we are doing in the offline here, now we have a room to join foreign people, means overseas people, and anyone can join. That is the beauty of this. So, thank you. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think at the end of the day, it's really not leaving anyone behind and just having a very conscious, like make it a conscious effort to think about it. And yeah. So, okay, I think we have come to like sort of the end of our panel. We thank you very much for being here. I think it's very insightful. Um, good sharing. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you very much.